Awesome. Okay. All right. Uh, let's get started from where we left off. But let's do a quick recap. Uh, so, what all did we cover in, so far in chapter three? <laughs> Okay, so just so Francis just said uh, demons. So, <laughs> demons of Francis. <laughs> Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, let's go. Uh, so, yeah, what, what, what did we, what have we covered so far? Government, okay. Deacons, what is the meaning of deacons? Okay, what's the Greek word for deacons? Yeah, diakonos. Diakonos. You gotta sound like a Greek, dude, when you say that. <laughs> Maximus Decimus Meridius. Okay, what else? Apostolos. Apocalypse is the end of the world, dude. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what <laughs> that is. Apocalypse. Apostolos. Okay. Good fun, good fun. <laughs> All right, what, what what did we learn from the first uh, local church, Jerusalem local church? Just brief points that you remember, right on top of your head. All right. Right. Yeah, they watch Jesus. They learn from his own life. Okay, and we see the emergence of deacons uh, in Acts chapter 6. Uh, it simply means to serve, help, attend to, and uh, whatnot. And the way they chose those people, it's brilliant, right? Honest report, full of the Holy Spirit, full of wisdom, took full responsibility for daily distribution of the food. Okay, it's amazing. They took responsibility. Account that means there was a sense of accountability as well with that, okay? Um, and what else? Women were also part of this, uh, were also deacons uh, who were in, in many local churches, as we see that. Sorry? Yeah, so they were not only responsible for administrative work, but they were also encouraged uh, uh, to take part in spiritual ministry, right? And that resulted in... Uh, yeah, science, miracles, and wonders, and that resulted in uh, new churches being raised, new local churches in different regions being raised as well. Okay, um, and so with that, we see that the there was an emergence of elders as well. So we had the apostles, and then we have the deacons, uh, you know, and then we see the uh, emergence of elders. And let's see what the notes and the Bible has to say about the emergence of elders. Okay. So in Acts chapter 11, we see the leader at Jerusalem referred to as elders. Okay, In Acts chapter 11, we can go through that entire chapter when you can. So that's where this word is being introduced for the first time. The elders or the leaders, sorry, the leaders in the local church of Jerusalem are referred to okay, as elders. So that means a bunch of people saying, okay, hey, they, this group is called the elders. Okay, so... Uh, this they also did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. One of the references in Acts chapter 11, verse 30. So they are referring to uh, this, they sent it to the elders. You know, they are referring to this group of people or leaders as elders. Okay. Now, uh, let's read Acts chapter 14, verse 21 to 23. Uh, Acts chapter 14, verse 21 to 23. And probably the next class, what I'll do is run through the entire timeline of the book of Acts. Okay. Um, so book of Acts is written by who? Luke. Okay. He's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so for those of you online, I think uh, people here in class have had extra coffee, uh, extra tea, uh, and uh, so, <laughs> yeah, so, um, 
the gospel of luke part 2 oh, no. okay and uh, who is he writing it to the, the gospel of luke and the book of acts uh, he's writing it to his friend called theophilus okay um so that's the context so he's writing to a friend all of these records um, so the next class, as I mentioned, I will go through the timeline of the entire book of Acts. Like, what is the actual year span? Like, how many years, you know, uh, does the act, book of Acts actually span over? So that, we'll do that in the next class. So in Acts chapter 14, verse 21 and 23, we are again looking at the emergence of elders. What it really means is, okay, uh, verse 21, it says, And when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra. Iconium and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. Verse 23, uh, to our context. So when they had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. Okay. So in verse 23 the key word there appointed elders the greek word appointed uh, word uh, the word used there is ordained yeah ordained so are you an ordained minister of god we ask no like are you ordained where were you ordained when were you ordained so the simple understanding of what ordain is or is means to appoint or to elect or to choose or to be in charge of okay so that's what it really is so that means it goes on to say that these elders that says they appointed elders, that means they were elected. And it was not just one person's decision. It The group of people were involved. Sometimes the congregation was involved in choosing, okay, we elect this person as an elder, or we elect so and so as the elders of this church. Are you with me? So another important thing, again, to ponder on is the word elder. When we think of that word the meaning of the word elder is what older okay so back then what they would choose uh, the way they would choose is or they would consider most of the elders were older in age but young in the christian walk because they were just saved or new believer as we call it right new believer but they've come long enough to have enough spiritual maturity above everybody else. Are you following? Right? So they were spiritually mature, although they were new believers, they were spiritually mature, and they were older in age. Hence, elders. Okay? So uh, in, it also means uh, presbyter. Presbyter, you know, is another Greek word called presbyteros. Uh, it simply means uh, a spiritual leader. So it's like, and that's where we get the word Presbyterian, another one of the denominations, right? As Presbyterian. Okay, so that's the word elder comes from the Greek word presbyteros. So, in many sense, uh, you, you know, you're like the spiritual leaders here in college, like your lead worship in a sense, right? Um, so, and, you know, when you take up some leadership role in the church, it can be addressed or referred to as, yeah, presbyter. Yeah, Presbyterian, it's, it's become a denomination. Uh, and I, I think I'm not sure if, if I mentioned uh, there are at least 40,000 40, odd denominations. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so guys, this is, we are going on a journey now. All right, we see apostles uh, right from the day of Pentecost, 120 people, 12 apostles being selected, and the 12 apostles choosing deacons, seven deacons, and then, you know, I'm sure they've multiplied. And then from there on, we see elders. Right, and this the the context behind us understanding what elders is is take someone taking responsibility, a group of people taking responsibility, or two or three elderly people but spiritually mature. We're known as elders, but uh, it simply means um, presbyter. Okay. Uh, then we go on to see in Acts chapter fifteen uh, where they worked as one team, apostles and elders and deacons now it's it's all coming under one kind of bracket now elders and deacons um, and they continue to function as 
one team okay for example i'm not going to go through the entire verse there in acts chapter 15 in your notes uh page 20, 30 in your hard copy and page 20 in your soft copies uh, acts chapter 15 verse 1 2 6 and 22 now what is the context there um is sorry i beg your pardon Council? Consulate. No, yeah, Acts chapter 15. Yeah. Yeah, so what is happening there is there is going to a, a big major debate is happening between uh, Peter and Apostle Paul and a group of people. Okay, so the proper Jews are saying, like, you know, people, in, the leaders in Jerusalem are saying, if a Gentile wants to follow Jesus, he has to be circumcised. Paul is saying, no, not necessary. Okay, so here's the thing in verse 6 of that chapter acts chapter 15 it says now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter okay that means to discuss about this thing okay so saying you know what it's not like okay we are deciding on this this is what you have to follow it was wasn't like that again just like how to solve in acts chapter 6 the problem was there okay they were being uh, you know ignored uh, uh, and they were not served properly. Come, let's let's together. Let's reason together. Let's discuss on this matter and see how we can solve this. Now, this is not just a food issue. This is a doctor. You know, the doctrine issue here is a, is just take example. But still, the method remains the same. Right? Or the principle is they come together. Let's function together as one team. Okay, you can have different titles, whatever it is, but let's do something that is good uh, for the people. Are you guys with me? Okay, and and Paul again uh, constantly uses these words in his uh, uses the word elders in his other epistles, and he says, you know, in Acts chapter twenty, he refers to elders in the church of Ephesus, a church in Ephesus. And it's like, okay, hey, uh, elders, let's have a team meeting. I'm going to be coming here. Let's meet in Cafe Coffee Day in Jerusalem. Okay, <laughs> and let's talk about this. Okay, um, and so they function together as one team. Uh, in and I want us to look at another very important word in Acts chapter twenty, verse twenty-eight. Uh, actually, I'll read verse I'll read verse seventeen also. Acts chapter twenty, verse seventeen. It says, "From Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church." So he was in one place. They are in another place where he called. He must have sent a letter saying, okay, hey, let's meet. Okay, to the elders of the church. But verse 28 is, is amazing. It says, therefore, take heed to yourself and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. You can highlight that word overseers. To shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood okay so now we see another title being introduced here as the church of god right for the house of god the household of god the local church is also known as the church of god and the word before that is overseers okay everybody say overseer right so it is from this word the greek word we get the word bishop from the word overseer okay it again it is in the context to feed the flock that means to shepherd the flock, to guide them, to lead them, okay, to take them uh, and, and to take care of them. And it is from that same root word we get the word pastor. It means the same, right? Right? Pastor, bishop. Bishop, you just keep increasing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> My name is Bishop Reverend Pastor Roshan Jonas. Any, any more title and uh, India will be saved, right? <laughs> yes. Right. 
So towards the end of this chapter, we're going to look at different systems of the, of the church. And that we'll talk about the hierarchy and all of that. But initially, the heart at the core, we saw that they functioned together. The whole purpose was to serve better. Like that was their only agenda. That was their only objective is how can we serve the people better? How can we serve the people who are being added to this church better? That was their only objective. That was the heart of the matter, isn't it? Um, so, and the same thing with presbyter, bishop, it was to feed the flock, to take care and lead them as well. Okay, so the role of an elder, or in other words, a presbyter, or a bishop, or a shepherd, or a pastor, are the three things. Spiritual maturity, that means they had to set godly example. Okay, can I get an amen? Right, they had to set a, they had to set a they had to set a godly example of the Christian life, and then spiritual ministry that they need to be active in the Word of God uh, and doctrine, they need sound doctrine, okay, not just anything, okay, and spiritual oversight that means guard their flock, okay, um, so they function together as one. Um, all right, we need to scoot. Okay. Uh, Okay, let's just skip to the next section in page 22. In uh, I'm just going to skip the emergence of ministry teams. You can read that later. So from apostles, from 12 apostles to seven deacons to I don't know how many elders, every church must have had two uh, or one or two, three. And then we eventually come to a place where there was one overseer for all of them. Answers your question, Anand? Okay, there was eventually one overseer to all of them. Okay, so we read that in the emergence and the section where emergence of senior leaders or pastors. Okay, so I mentioned in uh, I think Acts chapter fifteen. Uh, wait, that's a very important chapter. I hope we get it right. Now we'll read, okay, Acts chapter 15, we'll read from verse 13 to 19. I will request someone to read it. Okay, but the context is this, isn't it? Now, initial leader was who of the local church in Jerusalem? Peter. Yeah, and so he moves, and then it was given to, transfer to James. Okay, so with that in mind, we'll read Acts chapter 15, verse 13 to 19. Okay, thank you. So, um, the key verse in of all these four verses is, is verse 13 in Acts chapter 15. It says, after they finished speaking, that means from verse 1 to verse 12, other people were speaking. Apostles and elders were speaking. And after they spoke, everybody gave, you know, voiced out their opinions, their suggestions, and whatnot. But one person had the final call. That is James. It says, after they finished speaking, James replied, Brothers, thank you for speaking. Now listen to me. Are you with me? Okay. So this is the this is where the introduction of say one overseer for a local church is being introduced um, as well okay so that is a pastor so in uh, and later we see i'm just going to skim through this section again so we see timothy being uh, you know uh, given responsibility to oversee a church as a pastor and uh, what are the who else timothy um if you look at First Timothy there, and another example of this is uh, in the Book of Revelation, right? Where you know Jesus is addressing different churches. One of the churches is the Church of Ephesus. One of the churches is the Church of Ephesus, right? And so it starts off by saying to a messenger at the Church of Ephesus. Okay, um, the messenger comes from the, the again Greek word angelos. Uh, Angelos means angel, 
so it can be mean both angel that means angel and also a pastor is known as a messenger or an angel because he is a messenger okay now obviously jesus is not going to give some a divine instruction uh, of how to run a church to an angel so here in this context it simply means a pastor are you with me now it, it becomes very easy if you have an nkjv version of the bible is uh and you did you have christology in the first year okay so there you would have learned the difference between the angel and an angel okay so the angel is what is referred to as christophany or theophany that means it's a manifestation of a pre-incarnate christ joshua chapter 5 and all we see you know the captain of the lord of uh, lord's armies uh, you know, stood before Joshua. So, what is that? That is Christophany. That means pre-incarnate manifestation of Jesus. Okay, Christ. That's what it is. So, um, so that's how you know the difference between the angel and an angel. Okay. So, um, all of that again comes from the same Greek word, angelos, pastor, etc., etc. All right. You guys, all with me? All okay? <laughs> what happened? I haven't heard that. Okay. And every time in the Old Testament, you you would time and time again read, yeah, the, the, the angel of God showed up. The angel of God showed up. But if there was a messenger, an angel that brings an angel. Uh, as in, but the, see, that's only in the NKJV version of it. It's not there in every translation. But to understand if it's the angel of God uh, or uh, you know theophany, that's a pre-incarnate uh, Christ, you have to read the entire context of the verse, not just one verse. Okay? But all of that in another subject, another day, or during lunchtime or something. <laughs> okay, uh, now let's just talk about um, the fivefold ministers and team ministry. Okay, fivefold ministers and team ministry. Okay, just to uh, can I get someone online to go through that section? I hope everybody's okay online. Fivefold ministers and team ministry. All right, I'll go through it. Okay, so one of the outstanding features we see in the book of Acts is team ministry. Uh, that means everybody worked to uh, function together as a team. And so, a couple of points that's mentioned over there is the local church is the place where ministries are to be birthed, equipped, and released. Okay, where are you? I mean. Uh, Soft copy, page 23, page 34, hard copy. The local church is the place where ministries are to be birthed, equipped, and released. All ministries, fivefold ministries, are, and others need to be rooted in the local church for spiritual refreshing and accountability. I'm just going through those points, guys, for us so that it's self explanatory. All ministers, pastors, elders, deacons, other fivefold ministries. Um, and other believers coexist and function together in a local church. They coexist. Okay. Um, and the last point: the calling and ministry of some people will require them to go out to the world or to the body of Christ at large, whereas others may be called to minister within their local church body. Um, so, um, I, I don't like to use an example usually like com compare the local church to something but I heard one of one of the uh, preachers do this but I, I really like that as analogy he says he said the local church is like the Noah's Ark he said the look lo a, a local church or the church in general is like a Noah's Ark okay why um, okay, you step inside Noah's Ark uh, you know it, it's it's not the seven star cruise liner like wow swimming pool all the you know pool but is it no it wasn't right it's just all kinds of animals are there in noah's ark you step inside and uh, with all kinds of animals comes you know their smell and uh, whatnot so it's not it was not, wasn't a great smelling place as well right uh, but it was the safest place on earth was it not 
yeah so you step into a church uh, no church is perfect you will find all kinds of characters we use that word no it's like oh, dude that person is a character dude uh, you know this person in my team is a character dude uh but it's the place on earth isn't it right and so i'm teaching worship ministry for the final years one of the things we learned there is the difference between a local church worship team and a band okay now a local church worship team is exclusive and a band is inclusive what does it mean is a band will say us four and no more but the local church worship team is we have three auditions a year guys who wants to audition come audition be part of the worship team uh, but the band another thing is is uh, boy band or girl band aged between so and so no whereas the worship team a local church worship team is again open to all of every age right uh, it's not just men or women uh, young people with old old but more of that in next year third year worship ministry uh you see and you'll read more about it in first chronicles chapter 25 where in david's worship team you see the young and the old were part of it right and so that's um, a few few things to ponder about is that for a successful church is one of the signs that i would say is that our two generations functioning together right when you know the the time when joshua was fighting amalekites when joshua was fighting amalekites moses was up on the hill praying right now when joshua was losing the battle reinforcements were sent to whom ah uh, you normally you would think okay those who who's losing the battle you would send more armies more men is like go guys help him no but when joshua was losing the battle down here reinforcement was sent to moses up there moses represents the father generation joshua represents the sons generation sons and daughters don't get offended okay so you need the father generation the the elders and us we can't function without their prayers without their support without their encouragement and it's a, we need to work hand in hand for a church to function well are you guys with me right okay cool so we're going through it's the last section of this chapter is the different forms of the church structure okay different forms of the church structure this is where i really wish i had another mic <laughs> you could also okay so uh this is follow along with me um shouldn't take long before we could just close this thing okay so different systems now as this chapter is uh, one of the underlying facts about this chapter is evolution that means everything evolved how the church evolved uh, in in the book of acts itself isn't it from 3000 members and how deacons were introduced elders leaders pastors bishops etc etc and now hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years later here we are and uh, we have managed to uh, make something out of it and introduce our own systems of it and that's what we're going to learn today okay so different forms of church structure okay so one is the clerical system so what's a clerical system any idea clerical system clergy that's from you get the word clerical from the clergy so the word yeah so clergy means a group of people ordained or appointed to lead a church right uh, my wedding was conducted by a clergy this funeral was conducted by a clergy a, a leaders a bunch of leaders of a church okay a clerical system and then uh, you just have and, and you have the laity so uh, l a i t y it's there in your notes so um laity is just a group of people but they are not part of leadership a group of people in a church but they are not part of leadership okay this is very important uh, this is like see guys the all of this is fyi like uh, or gfii okay good for your information like you know so it's very important for you to know, know and understand all of these different systems okay it might just be very theoretical and what not why do we need to learn all of this but you need to it's just a basic understanding of how all the different churches function okay so 
some a lot of the mainline churches come under this category. Name a few. Baptists. Have you heard of Baptists? No, sir. I'm only Pentecostal, sir. I don't. Huh? Baptists, Methodists, Lutherans, Anglicans. Yeah, yeah, okay, CSI. Yeah, sure, why not, right? So all of them work like this, have a clerical system to it. They have a group of leaders who will take decisions together, who will conduct, uh, et cetera, uh, a lot of things of the matters of the church together, okay? Uh, that's that's the clerical system. What happens there? Usually there is a threefold order, bish bishops, priests, and deacons. Answering your question, uh, Anand, okay? So threefold order, there's some sort of a hierarchy there. So. Okay, so that's the clerical system. Then is the elder system, led by a group of elders. Um, now, one of the denominations that I'm aware of has this system is the brethrens. Uh, they don't have one leader, like an overseer or like a pastor. They have a group of leaders who makes the decisions for the church. No, they don't have a pastor. That's why it's called the elder system. Sorry? Oh, elders, they take turns. So, not that I'm aware of, uh, is at least from people that I've come across uh, who were part of the Brethren churches. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but see, there may be. I'm, I'm not really sure. But like from the churches that I've seen, or you know, my, I have a lot of friends who are brethren. They they have they just have elders, and they don't have one overseer. But there might be churches, brethren churches, who might have. Uh, but yeah, you were saying, Sean. How is it in APC Church? Is uh, so we have one overseer. Uh, we kind of follow the Acts thing. So we have one overseer. We have pastor Ashish, right? And so then we have associate pastors. Um, so we we all report to him. So yeah. Yeah. Right. So we'll answer that towards the end of this chapter. We'll we'll definitely answer that. Okay. Um. So that's so. What's the first system, guys? Clerical system, okay, the clergy system as we call it, okay, clergy. Oh, and the second one is the elder system, okay. So uh, led by a group of elders has shown reasonable success, uh, you know, recently. A cooperative leadership, it requires cooperative leadership. Why? Because there are, if there are at least three elders, they need to agree on one thing, right? They need to cooperate with each other, okay, uh, and. In some cases, may cause difficulty in casting a single vision. Three people, okay. two people itself is enough. Okay. A lot. Okay, <laughs> uh, you bring three people is like okay. I have a one vision. You have one vision. You have one another vision. Now we have to discuss, break our heads about how can we accommodate all of our three different visions. Are you with me? So, so that can be very challenging. Right. So, who decides what is best for the church, and how do you know that's right? Example. Right. Um, so, okay, let's go to the next one. Independent local churches, led by individual pastors with pastoral teams, plenty of room for vision, creativity, and growth. Um, however, there's a danger of totalitarianism. What a word. Okay. Totalitarianism. Uh, so, what does that mean? What does that mean? Okay, let's just say that word. Come on, guys, for the for the fun of it. Totale, totalitarianism. Yeah, totalitarianism. Woohoo! The what? Tourism and. <laughs> Oh, I'm not going to say that, dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be in trouble online. Okay, so. <laughs> so, what is the meaning? 
totalitarianism. What does it mean? It is a slash called dictor dictatorial or dictatorial. I need some coffee, guys, now. So I'm. <laughs> yeah, dictatorial. Leadership. Totalitarianism or dictatorship. There you go. It's easy, right? So there's a slash there. So what's a dictatorship? You make yourself as a leader, okay? And then? Yeah. Yeah, the head. Yeah. 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 So uh, that that is the example, right? Yeah. Correct. So it's a system of government. In other words, so modern day, you would use the word communist. Right? So you it's a system of government that says, okay, your will doesn't matter. Okay, you think you have a free will, it's good for you. <laughs> uh, but you really don't. <laughs> my will is your will. Okay, let my will be done in yours. Right? <laughs> it's like that. Okay. Uh? Huh, yeah, North Korea, uh, Russia. China, um, so a day that is, that can be the, a danger. And when we talk about this independent local churches in the in this system where there's, I mean, I'm saying it's a danger. That means it's a danger that can be avoided. Okay, uh, <laughs> so yeah, failure in proper succession in some cases. So that last point is very crucial. Failure in proper succession in some cases, not all cases. Now, what does that mean? Is okay. So, what happens if that leader decides to move on in life? Someone else, no backup. So, what if there's no one to take over, right? So, that's the says it's failure in proper succession in some cases, not all cases, right? Yes, a leadership transition has to be. Uh, so, you see, the thing is, it's there in in the Word of God when you read Numbers chapter eight, verse twenty five. Even in Levitical priesthood, it says the priests who were responsible of the, in the tabernacle of Moses, uh, you know, when they come to the age of 50, their responsibility changes. So younger people take over what they used to do. And so there's a transition uh, in leadership and in responsibility. Okay, so and it's it's kind of it's God's idea. It's there. You read Numbers eight twenty five, and you can read the entire chapter for your own thing. But anyways, that's independent local churches. Uh, that's one of the system um, and network of churches, assemblies of God, vineyard, new life churches. Uh, there's so many other churches. Hillsong, Planet Shakers, what's the People's Church now? Something. Okay, I mean um, there are more, isn't it? So network of churches. So that's what we're looking at. What the system is like. There, there are different ways how each network is organized. Overall, a useful model. Okay, there are different ways each network is organized. Okay, so in some cases, there is a danger of too much control, abuse, competition among churches within the network. Okay, um, so let's say, for example, in APC, if if APC East is fighting against APC West, it's like. You know, constantly drawing comparison, saying, okay, hey, you know, um, it's not healthy, isn't it? Th now, that is, again, a danger, right? a temptation that can be avoided, uh, that, that we need to be mindful of. But then it is a useful model. Uh, you want to plant a lot of churches. Now, APC is doing that, isn't it? We have 11 other locations outside of Bangalore. In Bangalore, we have five, one in Bangalore, and then we have, the list goes on, Kalyan, Barampur, Chandigarh, uh, yeah, etc. Rajasthan, Raj and Varanasi, we have three. Uh, so you, you see, it, it's helpful to have these network of churches, um, but we just again have to be mindful of how we function, uh, all of that. Yeah. Sorry? Uh, uh, yeah. Right. So there can be like a collaborative kind of a thing. Yeah. 
I uh, know I don't think that comes that would come under network of churches, but network of churches is an example of APC like I, I gave that or like yeah, Hillsong London, Hillsong, uh, Sydney, uh, you know, Planet Shakers, Melbourne, yeah, many branches like that. But um, now again, it says the danger in uh, con too much control, uh, you know. But each the authenticity or the beauty is when you have a branch in Mangalore. So we have the pastor there has given freedom to plan accordingly, right? And same thing with a pastor in, in different locations geographically. They have the freedom to decide what they want to do there uh, kind of thing. So that's another system. You have house churches, apostolic church networks. I'm just going skimming through. House churches, okay, so it's, it's, it's uh, modern day. So the birth of synagogues, we've heard of synagogues, right? The synagogues is the uh, it's a final form of house churches that happened that was initiated during the uh, people of Israel's exile to Babylon. You know that simple uh, that the Temple of Solomon was destroyed by Babylonians, right? Right, and they were taken into exile for seventy years. Now, the temple meant everything to the people of Israel. It was one common place where they could have corporate worship. Let's, you know, why the why does the psalmist say, like, "Come, let us go to the house of God"? Or, "I was glad when they said to me, come, let us go to the house of God,'" because it was one common place where they could go and celebrate. And when they were that was destroyed, people were destroyed. Their spirits were broken. And one of the psalmists says, "By the rivers of Babylon," I mean, you, there's a song, you know. Um, so for 70 odd years, they did not have a common place to meet. What do they do? So they started these small cell groups. And the final form of that is what later became as synagogue in the New Testament. Like, you know, it's, 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 it, 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 so it took time to evolve. OK, and so we kind of get an idea of house churches, uh, you know, like that. Um, Cell-based churches or mega churches, I'm just going to go through that. Uh, so, guys, the point here is that there is no perfect structure. Uh, once again, to answer your question, <laughs> on, okay, there is no perfect structure. The bottom line is uh, we must be aware of what God wants us to do. Are we aware of His blueprint? Are we aware of His His word? Like, what is He? Uh, what does He want to do in and through us? Are we led by the Holy Spirit, like the early church? Were. So, and pick a system, and it is very important that we honor different denominations. The reality, the fact of the matter is, in this day and age, there are many denominations, right? But it, and I don't think uh, it is right for us to say, okay, hey, yeah, you know, comparing one denomination with another or putting one uh, one denomination down, and whatnot. So, it's none of our business, isn't it? It's. Um, Respect what they believe in, you know, whatever it is. You have the healthy discussion if you want to. Okay, one denomination believes in manifestation of the gifts of the spirit. The other denomination does not. Okay, if you have a friend like that, you want to have a healthy discussion. It's 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 fine. But then to put to sound condescending, saying like you know I'm better than yours, my denomination. It's unnecessary, right? And pick a structure. Now again, all of this we learned. All of this is to. Is you pick a system that works for you. Look, let's say you want to plant a church. Uh, you you know you you go through all this list of systems. Okay, inky pinky ponky. You know no. So <laughs> the bottom line is again whatever system you choose, uh, you know to function with, it's very important that you're constantly dependent on the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be led by His voice, um, and that is really the bottom line of, of it all is to be led by the leading of his voice. So, yes, absolutely. So in the last class, we learned about speaking the truth in love, isn't it? Uh, and um, so that is important. It is, And I am I'm, I'm stressing this, that we need to have a healthy discussion because nothing, nothing can be accomplished by having an argument. Nothing. Uh, at the end of the argument, you will be tired, the other person will be tired, and nothing will be accomplished. We will be still in the same place. The world didn't become a better place. 
right? So have healthy discussions. We need. It's very important to have healthy discussions, um, etc. Okay, you pick a system that will work for you, for your church, based on your location, uh, the people uh, who your audience are. All of that matters, factors into the system that you want to choose. Understood, right? Yeah? OK, so uh, that's, let's just stop here. That's the end of the system uh, uh, sessions. Yes. This is one book. Sean. There is a lot, yes. As mentioned, yeah, it's it's pretty deep. It's a lot of information to absorb. Um, so, yes, have a lot of coffee when you come for this session. All right, thank you all online for joining in. God bless you. I'll see you next week.